Welcome back to the next tutorial in this series. In this tutorial we're going to look at tracking all the dice faces. At the moment, when we run our program, it starts with a dice face of 6 and goes up to 10 rolls. So we can see how many come out, but we want the program to actually count how many 2's come out, how many 5's come out, how many 6's come out. So let's go do that. So in our program, we need to declare some new variables. So underneath our variable list, rather than writing out individual ones like dim i face 1 as integer, and then having to go i face 2, we can actually declare all integers on one line. So I like to group them together. So in this case here, I can then go i face 2, i face 3, So now all six variables are declared, but I also need to initialize them. So this is my initialize area, and I need to set like I face one, and I need to set the count to zero. This way I know what number they're starting at, and also it helps with the incrementing of plus equals. So if I go copy paste, and I'm just going to copy and paste this out five more times, which will give us our six and then just change the one character then we've initialized all our variables to zero and what we want to do is use like an if statement and say well if the I rolled result here is a one I want to increment this variable here by one if it rolls a 6, I want to change this one to a 6. So I need to use some sort of decision structure. Now I could use an if then else, if or an if then statement, if it a 1, then add 1 to it, if it is 2, if it is 3. I could go through a situation of using a nested if then else. If it is a 1, then add 1 to the 1 count, else if it is a 2, add a 1 to the 2 count, else if it is a 3, and that could take a while as well. But one of the best structures that we've been given is actually what's called a case select or a case statement. So we could actually say, well, select case I roll result is actually a one. So if the integer that is rolled here is a one, then we can get it to do something. Well, what could I do? Well, I could actually say that I face one plus equals a one. So if the dice comes back as a 1, display or add 1 to the count. What I can then do is copy and paste that down like I did before. And then change it to case it is a 6, add 1 to the 6s. If it is a 5, add 1 to the 5s. And I do this for all the numbers that can come up. Now, if you've got too many, remember, you can always delete the line. Now, once I've collected all the numbers, I then want to output them and see what the results are. So let's just move this up. And then in my debug area, so outside of the loop, once it's finished running, and I've run it 10 times, I want to see how many ones have come up. So I'm going to go debug dot right line. And I just want to put out I face one. And then I want to do the same thing for two, three, four, five, six. and run our program now. So when I hit roll dice, you can see there are two fours, three, four fours. In our output, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, there's four fours, and that's correct. There are one, two sixes, and it shows there are two sixes. 
Now we can also output that information back to the GUI into this output text area. To do that, we can actually use this information here. And I'm just going to copy it and just paste it again. But rather than using debug.writeline, I'm going to change it this time to txt output dot text plus equals iface dot to string and once again using the environment dot new line to output the information. Now we could go and top that out all the time or once again I'm just going to copy that and just paste it over these last ones I just copied. I'm just going to paste it down six times. And just go through and go dice face two. And I've got an extra couple there or extra one there. I'm just going to delete that. Run the program now. When I roll the dice, you can see the results of that. Let's improve the output of that and just add in the number of ones. and replicate that for each of the dice faces. Run the program again run the output, you can now see the number of ones was one, two twos, two threes, three fours, no fives, and two sixes. And you can see that reflected in the data. If I want to roll it a hundred times, you can then see the hundred outputs, and you can then see that there were 19, 20, 20, etc. Now, if you want to clear this every time you hit the roll dice, then at the top of this function of the roll dice button, we just need to clear the text box. So underneath the initialize, here we can put txt output dot text is equal to quote quote, and that'll clear the text box every time we hit start. So you can see that change, and when we go to 100, you'll see it clear and only the 100 rolls appear. So this way we can actually track the dice faces. But there is a catch to our program that we can only track a six-sided die. We're actually limited by this case statement and also by the number of variables that we've declared. Now I don't know if the user is going to have a thousand, a hundred, a million sided dice. I'm not really sure. But to do that, we're going to have to use what's called an array. And we'll look at that in our next tutorial. But so far we have a nifty little dice tracker that can count how many rolls for a number of times. If I want to change it to any dice less than six, you can do so. So if I had to flip a coin, which is a two-sided dice, and say flip a coin a hundred times, I can then roll the dice, which is a two-sided, and in my data below, there was actually exactly 51s and 52s, which isn't too bad. Let's do it again. I got 51 and 49. So it's really useful for if you're doing a statistical maths program. Anyway, if you found this tutorial useful, give it a like, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next tutorial when we start dealing with arrays.